Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, Geo here, and today we're going to be taking a look at Brand New Animal, or BNA, the latest anime from Studio Trigger. Let's do this. Although the series is scheduled to air April 8th, we got an advanced look on March 21st with the first six episodes. This is directed by Yo Yoshinari and written by Kazuki Nakashima. Now, what the heck is Brand New Animal? The series is set in an alternative 21st century where the existence of humanoid creatures or humanoid animals called Beast Men or Beast Man? Anyways. Beastmen. <laughs> they suddenly appear uh, or are revealed to uh, humanity, and they're basically uh, anthropomorphic animals that can talk and behave like any other regular human. And of course, as with, and of course, as is the norm with humanity, they are faced with extreme prejudice and racism. And as a result, they built this city called Anima City. Which is celebrating its tenth uh, anniversary. Which is celebrating its tenth anniversary, and it is sort of a safe haven for all of these creatures, these anthropomorphic animals, to reside and uh, not face the wrath of angry, shook, and not face the wrath of angry humans that don't get it. Uh, Studio Trigger, you know, they like to go all out and do bombastic anime, and this is no exception. And it seems to me that they got a little bit too hooked on the synthwave vibe from Promare, because I see a lot of similar uh, color palettes and hues and soundtrack cues, the music, all that stuff. It's a vibrant, uh, exuberant series with a lot of gusto, as I like to say. I love this world and how it looks. I love the design for the creatures and the, even the regular humans. The beast men, they're sort of this alternate uh, species to the homo sapiens and they can turn into their fairy selves, I guess. Uh, pretty quickly and they are very diverse. In the story we follow the character of Michiru, a young high school student that suddenly turns into a tanuki uh, animal and she fearing the worst runs away and is seeking refuge in Anima City. Over there she meets the character of Shiro Ogami who is this wolfman uh, detective who will do anything imaginable to protect his city and protect its inhabitants. And that's part of the fun when you have two characters that are very different from each other. Michiru is very uh, fun. She is extremely adorable, but she's naive and kind of silly in a good way. And it goes with the personality, I guess, of a tanuki of myth and legend. Whereas Shido, he's very GI, hard edge. He's very stubborn, but he is a good person at heart who wants to do good. He just, you know, does it in his own unique way, I guess. But he is the, the uh, super cop protector, if you will. Part of the fun of this series, of course, is that when you have a story with anthropomorphic animals, you can take... Uh, all the uh, social criticism and uh, morals and the story itself, people can examine the tropes through the lens of uh, animals and our eccentric natures and characteristics can be displayed through the stylings of animals and their particular quirky selves, if you will. So a lot of people do enjoy that and I think it's an excellent tool to uh, for a viewer, I guess, to understand the problems of society and all that stuff. You can examine it in a fun way that's not, you know, you're not repeating yourself like many other series have tried, or comics, or other manga, or movies, where they do it in the regular old fashion. Here, you can go all out and do something unique, something uh, pretty cool looking, with animals and, of course, the visuals are a key component. The character design has to be top-notch for you to invest yourself in this story. 
Whereas series like uh, Beastars, for example, or uh, films like Zootopia, they're more uh, they're more drama focused, I guess. Uh, this one goes all out with its action, its vibes, and and just the style uh, and the nature of the story. Uh, yes, you do have a character Michiru that uh, you know we can have a protagonist turn into one of the uh, creatures and you can examine society through her perspective which is great and allows the viewer to learn and get all that exposition dialogue uh, thrown at you uh, through her because she's learning it as well uh, so that's always fun but the success of this show I think will rely in how stylized it is and it really does look fantastic i love all the hues and color palettes and uh, it just looks pretty freaking awesome man i love how scenes will you know uh, the coloring will dictate the mood of the scene uh, characters walking through a city and all you see are blue uh hues because of the night sky and the moon all the city all the city lights are turned off and all you see is the reflection of the night sky. So it gives you an ambiance that's very different from other shows. Uh, a lot of action scenes and key sequences happen at twilight hours. So you see a lot of reddish, orange, and, and purplish uh, colors in the sky. And it's reflected on the buildings with the shadows. It's, it's very cool looking. Just on an artistic value, you gotta check this show out. It's pretty freaking badass, in my opinion. The characters, uh, when, like I mentioned earlier, uh, it it lends itself to examine tropes and characters. So a lot of them can be a little bit tropey, but that's on purpose, and you're not gonna mind. You're gonna like it. But for the most part, they're really cool. Uh, even the minor characters, there's, there's something interesting about them. Even if you don't see them that often, whether it's a monkey pickpocket or uh, the mink or stuff like that there's something interesting about them that you want to find out more about them also when we do get uh, super action scenes they look fantastic if you saw uh, previous works from Studio Trigger like Promare the fluidity of the action is present in BNA and that's awesome because I could have easily have seen this be a movie instead of a series and i'm so happy it's a tv series because you get more time to uh fall in love with certain characters and enjoy this world for what it is so for six episodes to be streamed earlier than expected uh this is pretty awesome i do recommend it i think uh bna uh, will be one of the highlights of 2020 in my honest opinion also, the music soundtrack, I don't know if I already mentioned it or not, but I will anyways. Uh, it's pretty awesome. I love synthwave uh, themed uh, soundtracks and all that stuff. Uh, it's one of my favorite genres in music, I guess, in scores specifically. So to have that is really cool, and it gives it sort of that hard-edged, cool uh, throwback anime with modern sensibilities and all that stuff. So yeah a plus for me plus the opening is so freaking awesome i wish i could i could play the song and not get a copyright strike uh because i think it's one of the best <laughs> anime openings of 2020 the song is just pure fire i love it so much so yeah bna brand new animal i absolutely uh, i'm on board i, I love it first six episodes are awesome and i cannot wait to see how the series develops how the main plot progresses what will happen to michiru uh discovering how she is what seems to be the first human that can turn into a anthropomorphic animal or a, a beast man so i'm very interested in that also the mythology behind the wolf and uh ogami and all that stuff that's pretty interesting ogami okami huh I see what you did there. Uh, guys, have you seen Brand New Animal? Let me know down below. If not, let me know what is your favorite anthropomorphic themed comic, uh, anime, manga, whatever. Let me know down below which anthro series is your favorite. 
Guys, as always, thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. Please remember to hit the little bell icon so you know when new videos pop up. Always follow me on social media so we can keep the conversation going. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that fun stuff. I've got to go. I've got more anime to watch. I've got more books to read and review, more games to play. So, yeah, I'm totally improvising on this outro right now. So I will catch all of you on our next episode.